Have you ever been scrolling through Instagram and think, how do these NBA teams create these sports graphics? Well, in this video, we're gonna break down step-by-step -step in Adobe Photoshop, how to create this game day graphic for the NBA playoffs. Our first step while in Adobe Photoshop is go up to File, New, and we're gonna change the width to 1600, and we're gonna leave the height at 2000. Find the background layer on your layers panel, and we will wanna click on this lock button right here. Next, let's click on the rectangle tool in our toolbar on the left-hand side. And now we're gonna click and drag over our whole background. Find fill, select the color wheel, and now you can select whatever color you want your background to be. A quick tip here, if you move your mouse from the color panel into your graphic, it will allow you to sample a color off of your logo. For this example, I can just hover over the gold color that I want as my background and click, and it'll make that color appear in our color panel. With the rectangle tool selected, click and drag to create a rectangle across the bottom of our canvas. Let's make our way into the effects tab and then find gradient overlay. This will open up our layer style panel. We can now increase the opacity and you see it will create a gradient for our rectangle shape at the bottom of our graphic. Now, if you don't have this gradient selected by default, Click on your gradient and go into basics. You're gonna to wanna to find this one right in the middle. Hit okay and okay, and now you should have something that looks like this. You can see that our shape has a black outline around it. The simple fix for this is to click on your rectangle, hit stroke, and then find this box with the red line through it. The next part is probably the most important part of this graphic, and it's to create the platform for our players to stand on. Let's create another rectangle by selecting the rectangle tool on the toolbar on the left hand side. We're going to click and drag. Anytime you need to readjust the shape of your rectangle, you have to click on the move tool on the toolbar on the left hand side. This also allows you to click on one of the edges and now right click on your square and go to perspective. You can then take these white corner squares and move them towards the center of your graphic. We will want to repeat this process of clicking on a corner square then right clicking, but this time let's find distort. And now when you click and drag those corner squares, it should be a little bit easier. All right, sweet, it's starting to take shape as our platform. The next thing that we have to do is change the rectangle's color. This can be done by doing the same process of clicking on the rectangle in your layers panel and then finding fill and then sampling the color from the background. Hit okay, and now we have our platform the same color as our background. Click on the effects button. We're gonna once again be back in the gradient overlay layer style panel. The only difference here is we wanna reduce the opacity a good amount to around 10%. If you have an outline around your rectangle, remember you will wanna find the stroke button and take off your stroke or outline for your platform rectangle. Click on stroke and then find the box with the red line through it. Let's work on the top portion of the graphic. We can use the exact same steps that we just learned to create a rectangle at the top portion of the graphic. Click and distort the rectangle to create the correct shape. Do everything that we just did. Take the stroke off the rectangle, then match the color to the background layer. The only difference with this rectangle, when we go into the gradient overlay panel, we wanna check this box that says reverse. This will change the way the gradient is set so that the dark portion of the gradient comes from the top of the graphic. You can see why this is so important when we increase the opacity. Next is the outside shadow layer. In your layers panel, find your background layer. Once you found that, you wanna hit this button right here to create a new layer. With a new layer created, find the paintbrush tool on the left-hand side, and we're gonna to wanna to have our hardness set all the way down to 0%. Also, we can increase the brush size a significant amount so it covers a good amount of your graphic. If you increase the flow to 100% and click within your graphic, you can see it creates a pretty dark shadow. So what we can do is decrease the flow to around 40%, and when we click back into our graphic, the shadow isn't as strong. This is gonna give you a much more subtle effect. The darkest part of your shadow should be toward the edges, so if you wanna increase the flow slider, for the outside portion of your graphic, that's gonna be definitely recommended. All right, now that we have our background looking ready to go, let's add some text. Click on the text button on the toolbar on the left-hand side. Once you have resized your text layer, let's duplicate it by right-clicking on your text layer and then finding duplicate layer. Now let's select the text button on our toolbar and click and drag to highlight. 
and we then can type in the word day. To change the color of our game day text, click and drag to highlight and then find this color box on the top of your screen. We can then select black and now we have black text. With the text layer day selected, hit the layer mask button on the bottom of your layers panel. With the layer mask selected, click on the paintbrush on the toolbar and make sure black is selected. Decrease the hardness of your brush to 0% and make sure your flow is reset to 100. Now when you paint in your layers mask, it should slowly erase the word day so you have a fading effect within your poster design. For this next step, let's add our pictures of our players in. You can do this by clicking and dragging your pictures from your desktop into your graphic. The easiest way for you to cut out your pictures is to simply click on remove background. You can see that Photoshop has missed some parts of your background to erase. So let's make sure our layer mask is selected, click on the paintbrush on your toolbar and make sure you're painting with the color black. Increase the size of your brush and you're gonna wanna be on the hardness of 100%. With that done, you can now click and erase all parts of the background that Photoshop might have missed. If you look at the color of our players' basketballs, as well as their jerseys, they're all a little bit different. In this next step, let's learn how to correct the colors on our Photoshop design. The first thing that we're gonna wanna do is find this button right here. Now click and find the option for selective color. Once we are in selective color, find the tab for yellows or whatever color you're using for your design. You can see if I increase the magentas, it's gonna affect the entire graphic and we just want this effect for one of our players. So you can right click on this layer, go up to create clipping mask, and this will make sure that it only affects whatever layer is directly below the selective color layer. For me, I just wanna have a darker color of yellow so it blends better with my background. That would mean adding magenta and decreasing a little bit of scions. And I'm gonna do that for all four players. But remember, all of your players will require different color adjustments within selective color. So this is what we had before any color correction, and here's what it looks like after. Now we gotta add some shadows to make it look more realistic. First, click on one of your player layers, right click and go up to duplicate layer. This may cause your selective color layer to unclip, so you will have to right click, go up to create clipping mask, and re-clip it. Find that duplicate layer, go up to solid color, and we wanna create a black solid color layer. Right click and create a clipping mask so that it's attached to that duplicated player layer. Click on your duplicated layer, and then you can see when we right click and go to flip it horizontally, it should be your player, but a black shadow layer. And now that we can see it, we can make a couple more adjustments to it. Click on one of the white squares, right click, and then go to perspective. Now when you take these white squares and move them down, you can see what it does to your shadow layer. You will wanna mess around with flipping it back horizontally as well as distorting your shadow layer until you get something that looks like this. It's gonna take a little bit of trial and error, but you'll get there. With your layer mask selected for your player, click on the paintbrush, and then what I like to do is set my hardness of my brush to 0%, and then when I erase the layer, it gives you a faded effect. Something I like to do as well is decrease the flow to 40 or 50, and then continue to erase parts of the shadow. I'll keep decreasing the flow till I am all the way down to the toes of my subject. Remember, the place where a shadow is the darkest is closest to your player's feet, so we are looking for a slow fading effect. With that layer selected, go up to Filter, Find Blur, and we're gonna add a Gaussian Blur. I personally like to use around 10 to 15% blur on my shadows, and you also can decrease the opacity of your shadow if the effect is too strong. You can now add whatever text you need for your game day information. If you're looking for this PSD file for yourself, check out my Patreon. I'm putting every PSD from my YouTube videos onto that page for y'all to have, as well as graphics packs and fonts. All right, let's get back to our design here. Now that you have the basic overall design done, it doesn't quite look ready to post though. So let's first add this texture and we're gonna drag it across our whole graphic. We'll next change the blend mode to soft light. And you can see it adds some texture into the background. For me, it's a little bit too much. So I'm gonna go into the layer mask button, hover over my mask and press command I, and then I'm gonna slowly paint this back where I see it fits. 
The next element for our final touches affects the text in the background the most. A lot of people know how to put text into their graphics, but they don't know the tricks to make them look good. Let's put this element from our Patreon graphics pack onto the top layer of our graphic. Click and drag this element till it covers your entire canvas. And now we can switch the blend mode to lighten and decrease the opacity to around 60. Let's click the layer mask button again while hovering over top of our layer mask, press Command or Alt and then I to invert our mask. Go to the paintbrush and then with white as the color selected, you can slowly add this effect to your graphic. Again, this is going to affect your black game day text the most and it's a really, really important step in this graphic. The last thing that we will do within Photoshop is add a color lookup. A color lookup is a really powerful tool and it adds a filter onto your entire graphic. So you guys can mess around and pick whatever one fits for your design. For the Pacers colors and the overall feel of this graphic, I felt like Fuji 3510 fit the best. And if the effect is too strong, you can always go to opacity and decrease the opacity to your liking. You can see the before and the after. So this is the professional graphic designers and they're going to get paid hundreds of thousands of dollars a year. And this is ours that you guys just learned how to do in 10 to 15 minutes. If you enjoyed today's video or like this series, leave me a like, shoot me a comment. And as always, I'll see y'all in the next video.